The difference between these levels of income is kind of hard to fathom. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly why you have to become rich. It's not even an option anymore. It is mandatory in the year of 2024 and for the future. Make sure you watch this video all the way through because I got a special surprise for you in the middle of it. This is what a $25 million a year salary looks like. So I can't wait till I'm making $25 million a year, boy. A year I can't wait About until I'm making 20% million. of Americans live on this amount of money or less. That's I crazy. I show you the lifestyles of people. 20% of Americans live on that amount of money or less. That's crazy. That's a large percentage. Who make this much money versus this much money and everything in between. Mm. The reason I want to look at these differences is because of this graph. It's going up, which is a problem. Wait, what did I say? Of this graph. You shape long run inequality trend before tax income share of the richest 1%. Before tax income share of the richest 1%, and that number is going up in the US. It's going up, which is a problem. Let's start with $25,000 a year. Okay. Which is absolutely right, so nothing. So let's say my name is George. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I am single and I have no kids. And I'm looking for a job. After some searching, I found this job as a security guard at a TV studio in downtown Atlanta. Okay. Me $12.50 TV an studio, hour, downtown Atlanta. Quite a bit more than the minimum wage of $7.25 an hour. $7.25 is the minimum wage? Come on, guys. Come on. I work 40 hours a week. And I work every week except two that I set aside for holidays, sickness, and vacation. This okay. means I make $25,000 a year. At it's this level, absolutely. around 29% of Americans ridiculous. earn as much or less than me. So this makes me sad, it, bro. This comes out to be just over $2,000 a month that I have to spend. I gotta pay taxes. That brings me down to $1,764 to live okay, on this To calculate this next part for this income and all of the incomes we're looking at, I used some data from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics that shows that people in this income bracket spend about 41% of their pre-tax income on housing. I've got about $850. 40% 40 of their pre-tax income on housing. So half of that money already, poof, gone in the wind just to live somewhere, just to have somewhere to sleep. I'm going to let y'all know something, bro. I lived in Los Angeles for a year in some change. I lived in Atlanta for two years. I've lived in Miami for a year now, and I'm still, I just got a house in Miami. I'm going to let y'all know something right now. $2,000 is rent. And that's what he's saying is 20% of people in the U.S. make per month. 1% of their pre-tax income on housing. I've got about $850. And that's a low rent. That's expenses. like studio apartments, that's like one bedroom apartment. Budget. I'll definitely be renting instead of owning a house. Definitely. Right. A lot of landlords these days require you to earn three times more the monthly rent. So yep. I'm probably going to need roommates if I'm going to get approved for an apartment. Yep. All right, let's look at Craigslist. I really can't afford to live downtown, so I'm going to look in the outskirts. Nah, in and the I suburbs. found this place right outside the city. This is going to work, and it's within my budget for rent and utilities. So how am I going to get to my job which is in downtown Atlanta that's right. 20 minutes away from where I live 20 minutes. and like most American cities there's not great public transportation here right. so I'm gonna need to have a car let's just say yep. in this assumption and it's kind of a big assumption that I already have a car and that's a big assumption it's a bro it's a 2004 Toyota Solera that I got on Facebook marketplace lower income Americans spend more on their income for transportation than any other segment of the population lowest in oh my Jesus Christ Oh my Jesus Christ. The data we'll use says about 15% of pre-tax income. 15% just to get, so oh my God. $313 for gas, insurance, parking, and saving up for maintenance and repairs. We gotta be pretty careful about how much extra driving we do and hope that no big maintenance issues arise. According to this BLS data, I spend about 15% of my income on food. That includes both groceries and eating out. That's $313 a month for food. A lot of people think that this income bracket just goes to McDonald's all of the time, but the reality is the average order amount at McDonald's is it's too much. $8, so that will not get me through the month. It's That'll too get much, me through yeah. 13 days worth right. of food. 
So I gotta go to the grocery store. I gotta go to the grocery store. in most lower income areas in this country, there aren't a ton of grocery stores. And the ones that are available are much less likely to carry fresh produce or other nutritious food. Yeah. So I'm gonna see what I can do by stocking up on beans and rice, peanut butter and jelly, Wonder Bread, Top Ramen, freezer meals. For fresh So understand this. Potatoes. And, and I'm gonna tell y'all something. I've been, I've had money for the last about two and years and some change. You know what I'm saying? Like actual money, like where I can go do what I want. I can drive the car that I want. You know what I'm saying? I could go eat where I want. I can go buy what I want for the most part. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, I have not forgotten what it's like to go in a grocery store. And that's what I say the best part about being, I'm not going to call myself rich, but I'm going to just say being rich or being financially stable. Let's use that word. Is when you go to the grocery store, small. It's the small things. When you go on Amazon Prime and you want to watch a movie, you don't have to think about buying this movie for eight dollars. You don't have to even think about that. I can afford that. Bop, whatever. I can do that all day. I can go to the grocery store and buy whatever. It doesn't have to be rice, beans, and this. It, I, I can. You you kind of get what I'm saying. It's the smaller things in life that going to the movies. You know what I'm saying. Uh, Getting haircuts all the time. Small things, bro. Small things. And some of the cheaper produce. And no eating out. Or right. rarely, occasionally, on special occasions, eating out. Very rarely do, eat out. I'll be looking at the value menu at a fast food restaurant. I'll be looking for discounts, checking every price in the convenience store. Okay, but wait, don't I get government assistance for food, like food stamps? So from my research, I can see that you to probably get government get a few assistance, hundred. I need my savings account to be less than $2,000. Holy Check. Jesus Christ. My income needs to be lower than 19578 No, that's highway robbery. And I make twenty-five thousand. That's insane. So, nope, I don't qualify. Okay, that's so insane. we've covered our basic needs of housing, food, and transportation. But I still have a lot of expenses. We hear a lot about healthcare being a massive personal cost in the US, but what does that actually look like? Georgia's Medicaid website says that I qualify for government help, but even okay. with that, I will be paying around 10% of my income on health-related expenses like medicine, doctor visits, getting care that isn't covered by this government insurance. This is one of the reasons why people in my income bracket live around seven years less than seven the richest Seven years American. less. That's seven years less, and that's on average, guys. That's just average. You know what I'm saying? Seven years of your life is taken away just because you don't have enough money to sustain. Y'all see how this world is set up. You have to be rich. You have to. With a small amount of money for everything else. And there's a lot more that I need to spend just to live. Laundry, internet yep. connection, yep. cell phone. Yep. Conservatively, that adds up to $105. Not taking into account the overcharges and hidden fees. Yes. Like you're starting to see what's happening here. This doesn't add up. Entertainment, fitness, and travel just isn't feasible. They aren't there. I have no emergency savings. No and, and, the, and the craziest part about it is people around this tax bracket, they party the most. If you notice that, go to the club and see how many broke people are there. Go to go to the bars, go to strip clubs, go to parties and see how many broke people are there or people, I'm not going to say broke, just unfinancially stable, not financially stable, not stable at all financially. And they partying. You know what I'm saying? It's that and cycle of just loser real. Of an unexpected car repair, a health emergency. Any of these unexpected charges could be a major setback. Yep. I'm probably going to have to join the huge number of Americans that rely on debt, debt. to get through the month. Yep. Whether that's credit card debt or short-term loans with high interest rates. Yep. Maybe I'll need to move back in with my parents yep. or take on a second job. Maybe yep. I'll start DoorDash. driving Uber or yep. DoorDash. But what's clear is that my full-time job, is not going to pays cut it. much more than the minimum wage, is still not enough so that's almost double the minimum wage almost double what minimum wage is which means a lot of people aren't even getting paid what george is getting paid just off of this simple thing it's 2024 guys and i don't think under people understand this the days of you just waking up working one job graduating high school working one job coming home tired go to sleep and being able to sustain your lifestyle uh, any type of any almost just any type of lifestyle is virtually impossible it's impossible you know what i'm saying not straight out of high school maybe if you got a 
an engineering degree or a, a law degree and you're a lawyer, stuff like that, you've acquired high income skills. But just doing this is not it's not going to work anymore. And there's so many people who are just doing just doing this to make it through the month. I'm going to pause the video really quick. I'm excited about the sponsor of today's video. Uh, our way of you had him the represent all right now let's see what we can do supporting our journalism and with that let's get on to the next income tier all right now let's see what we can do with forty thousand dollars a year forty thousand now my name is simon i am the representative of the median american income of a single earner i make forty thousand no dollars a year single. as an event coordinator at a country club in atlanta my forty thousand dollar salary gives me just over three thousand dollars a month after federal and state taxes, I'm left with just under $2,700. $2,700. Using that same data set, my budget for housing is $1,133. I'm kind of feeling this one bedroom house. Let's say between rent for this house and my utilities. One, I'm they make one bedroom house? For my monthly housing expenses. That's the country club is kind of far from my house, and because there's no public transportation, I'm gonna need a car. Need I saved a car. up and purchased this 2011 Subaru Forester on Facebook Marketplace. I got it for $4,500. So, like George, I spend about $136 a month just on gas to get to my job. This leaves me with a little over $400. Now I remember this, y'all. I used to have to take the number six bus from High Park all the way downtown to work my really my first and only real job was at a candy store that used to be downtown Chicago. And I used to have to pay, I think it was two or three dollars there and back. So that's six dollars a day. If I work five do five days a week, that's thirty bucks a week. You know what I'm saying? I was only making four hundred, maybe five hundred dollars a week. You know, so thirty dollars down the drain already just to get there and from. So now I'm already down to what 370, maybe 470. Still have to eat on lunch, like it, man. Everything else, guys, gotta eat. What am I gonna do for food? According to the BLS data, someone like me spends around $467 a month on food. I typically spend about $100 a week on groceries and can use the rest on a dinner out or two. I've got a Kroger grocery store four minutes away from my house. And at this point, I'm definitely cognizant of every price on these shelves. Mm -hmm. I'm using coupons, trying yep. to get the best deal. Yeah. But I have leeway to spend a little bit more on maybe a decent cut of meat right. or some fresh produce. Maybe I buy organic every once in a while. No, I can come not doing that. Not at that. No, I ain't doing I'm that. Smart about how I spend and I don't eat out too much. This income level is right on the threshold where employers start to sponsor your health care plan. They start to subsidize it. That's mm -hmm. a thing here in America. And luckily, my employer does. But even still, get healthcare through your job. dollars a month on health, medicine, out-of-pocket doctors, pre-deductible expenses, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now I get to pay for a gym. I signed up for this low-cost gym for ten bucks a month. So after okay. covering these basic needs, I have two hundred and thirty-one dollars left for everything else. All of my other two hundred dollars. Laundry, guys. cell phone, internet brings me down to one hundred and twenty-six dollars. I will try to put some of this away for an emergency or a trip, put it into a savings account with a good uh, that's, interest rate. And he hasn't even accounted for going to the movies, taking a girl out, going for drinks with your homies, buying the new Call of Duty, none of that. Like think about how, and, and people always say money isn't everything, but what can you do in this world without money? You can't live because you need medicine. You need rent, you need food. You cannot live. You, you need water. You cannot live without money. Everyone needs money. This man is down to $126 and he has not did anything to enjoy his life at all. And this is assuming that he hasn't had a kid. This is assuming that he doesn't have a girlfriend. This is assuming like... Rate, so it will grow over time. But to be honest, I'm probably gonna spend this on entertainment. Like, I wanna go out and have fun. I wanna go to a movie. I wanna subscribe to Hulu and Netflix. Right. I might buy a book. Right. I might go out with some friends. And after all of that, I end up around zero. Zero dollars. So all in all, I'm doing better than George, but not that Barely. much better. I've got some money left over at the end of the month, but an emergency expense would still leave me in debt. In debt. All right, let's up this to a hundred grand a year. So now, that, now we're talking about this is the fine. This is the threshold where life gets okay for you. You still kind of, you still nickel and diamond. Please don't get me wrong, because a nice, a nice apartment at a hundred grand a month, you're making about eighty two hundred dollars a month. I mean, hundred grand a year, you're making about eighty two hundred a month. So a nice apartment was going to be. Three, four thousand, five thousand. If you want really nice, if you want more space, 
depending on what city you're in, obviously. Um, you know, you get a nice car, you might spend $900 a month, you can save a little bit. So this is when life starts to get comfortable. Only 10% of Americans, men, period, make this much. The women, I think, is 6% of women make this much, or 4% of women. So imagine, only 10% of the uh, entire country is actually living somewhat comfortably by themselves. Like, okay, now I'm Tim, and I just found this job in sales. It makes me $100,000 a year. I'm officially in the six figures. I make four times more than George and double the median income that Simon makes. I'm now near the top 10% of earners in this country. My salary gives me $8,333 every month. 2200 of that is gonna go to taxes. Holy and I'm Jesus. left with just over six grand. Ouch, we're not about taxes, bracket, sorry. You see that and that's the thing about taxes. When you have a business, you can you can use tax write-offs if you know what you're doing. You can use tax write-offs if you don't have a business. If you're working for the job for a job, they're taking taxes straight out your check. You'll never see it. Around thirty percent of their income on housing. Until recently, this salary would have been more than enough to buy a house. Mm -hmm. But these days, not, anymore. not so much. But. For the case of our assumption, let's assume that I, Tim, have been saving for 10 years and I'm finally ready to purchase my first home. Zillow is telling me that I can afford a house that's around $314,000. I'm gonna buy this nice Which is one nothing. bedroom townhouse in it. One bedroom townhouse. It's got these nice that. wood floors, all of this natural light. Oh wait, no. Looks like there's a condo fee, $426 per month, probably for that fancy workout room. Okay, we're gonna have to keep looking. I'm gonna okay. tell y'all right now, the average price is four or five hundred thousand dollars. Access to a pool and a fitness room. It's in a pretty good location, and it's just under two hundred sixty thousand dollars. With the condo fee, I'll be paying around twenty seven hundred dollars per month, which is about thirty two percent of my income mm -hmm. for housing. Mm -hmm. I get to spend more on housing than George and Simon make in a month. In a month. Oh, and by the way, I will have to cough up twenty thousand dollars, which is my whole savings for a five percent down payment and closing costs to make this house purchase. Thanks to my good credit, I can qualify for a good car loan that allows me to buy this beauty. A $50,000 BMW. It'll cost me $754 See, a see month. nice car, nice house. And it's it starting to get okay now. $79 every month to spend on gas, repairs, and insurance. I'm even starting to be able to afford to bring it to a professional car wash place, mm -hmm. get it detailed every couple months. Mm -hmm. I am upper middle class now, so I only have to pay 11%. And a lot of people think $100,000 is not broke. He just said upper middle class. Understand what that means. You're still the middle class. That means you're paying all the taxes. You're still relying on a job. It's the it, it, this is this is the this is like walking through the door of freedom and being stopped right at the door and saying that hey you still got a long way to go. That's kind of like what a hundred thousand a year is like. And a lot of people think if you think this is a lot of money, if you think you will be happy making a hundred thousand dollars a month, I mean a year. I'm gonna tell you right now, your your, your mind is too small. Hey, come on, it's too small per month just to feed myself. I get to eat out a lot more lately. Mm -hmm. When I'm at the grocery store, I get to buy what I want a little bit. Fresh and nutritious food much more abundantly. Right. I can buy nice meat and nice produce. I'm not overly concerned about the prices. And lately, since meal delivery apps have become more common, I'm ordering DoorDash like once or twice a week. Yeah. I'm starting to be able to use money to save myself time and stress. My job pays for a lot of my health insurance, and yet I still pay $500 a month on health, medicine, and these kind of expensive supplements I've been buying. I'm able to save I money. Think he's, I think he's stretching it a little bit with that though. I'm gonna be honest, like, you don't need to spend five, I don't even spend $500 a month on my health, and I make six figures a month. I don't, I, what am I spending $500 on? My supplements, my vitamins are, I buy once every other, maybe two, three months. It's $80, $60, if that. Uh, I got protein powder. It was 100 bucks. It's going to last me easily four months, easily five months. Other than that, like, I got health care and stuff. But if my job was paying for my health care, I don't have no. But I know everybody different. Some people got medicine and diabetes or stuff like that. But at this point, I don't so think every, most people aren't spending money on that. Deal. But the doctors I do go to have to be covered by my insurance plan. I can't go out of network. It would mm -hmm. be too expensive to pay out of pocket. With all my big expenses covered, I still have $665 to cover Wi-Fi, unlimited data on my phone. And since laundry and a gym are in my apartment, I actually don't need to use much 
much cash for that. Right. So even after all of these essentials, I have money to save and invest. And even still, I have cash left over to go out with friends. Every few months, I'm able to save up enough to go on vacation. My work pays me even when I'm taking time off. So right. I don't need to worry about that. I do have to strategically choose my travel locations to make sure that they're affordable. Because I chose a cheaper place, I'm able to enjoy drinks and food while I'm there. When I come home, I do have to save and scrounge for a couple of months to recuperate, but it's not too stressful. Not bad, and in fact, much better than the vast majority of Americans. Much better than now most people. To a million dollars. Now we're talking. I'm not gonna act like a million. Is the million dollars is the is the amount of money I made about my first nine to ten months of blowing up on YouTube, all my businesses being stable. It's what I made in about nine to ten months. That was a million dollars. This is freedom, but I think freedom starts at about a quarter, a million, two hundred thousand a year. If you're making two hundred thousand a year, it's about eighteen thousand, sixteen thousand dollars a month. Um, you have so much more to do. You can you can have two or three cars if you want to now. You can have nice rent. You could pay six, seven thousand dollars in rent, and you'll still have ten thousand dollars saved over after your rent, after your cars, after your food. You'll still have five, ten thousand saved over, making about two hundred thousand a month. Um, yeah, 200000 a year, sorry, I keep saying a month. See what our budget starts to look like. Hi, my name is Noah. I am a junior managing director at a big private equity fund. I'm in finance. I'm looking for a man in finance. I work seven <laughs> hours a week. I make big deals, they're very important, and I am earning $1 million a year. Right. That is $83,000 a month. After taxes, it's more like $48,000 a month. In one month, I'm making double what George makes in an entire year. In three years, I'll make more than he makes in an entire lifetime. I've right. got some serious money to work with here. Like I'm officially among the top 1% of income earners in this country. The world. And I'm very lucky because my income and wealth are increasing at a faster rate than everyone else's. Mm -hmm. And we'll see why in just a second. Making this much money, I can get a really nice house by spending 28% of my income, which means I can afford around a $2.6 million house. Wow, this one's kind of nice. This five bedroom, five bathroom home in this quiet Atlanta suburb. You can Man, do some way better nice than that here. too. Look at this kitchen. Oh, and this beautiful yard out here. I might pick up croquet. And it even comes with this little friend. Hey bud. I've always wanted my own taxidermy fox. This house is gonna cost me around $19,000 every month for the mortgage and other expenses. Like house mm -hmm. cleaners that come once a week to clean my entire house mm -hmm. and do my laundry. My yard is made. Right, I, I think he's stretching that a little bit too. Nineteen thousand a month for the house. They're stretching it a little bit. If you put a nice down payment down, you should be paying about eight, nine, ten thousand a month. You know what I'm saying? My house, I pay. If everybody don't want to be nosy, I pay about eight thousand after everything. I'm just about eight thousand a month. Well, landscape I got a million dollar house. I'm spending 16% of my income on transportation, which means a little over $13,000 a month on everything, cars and planes. Mm -hmm. Instead of owning a car, I lease one. Lease one? In three year periods, so that I can always be driving the newest, the newest car. car. Like yep. this Rivian, it's gonna cost me about a thousand bucks a month all in. I can totally afford that. Which is I'm nothing, I'm also taking yeah. a lot of taxis lately because I can afford it. And I can afford a private driver here and there, though I don't have a full-time private driver. I can hop on a flight too, whenever I want. First class. And when I fly internationally, I even splurge on business class. Still pretty expensive, but I've got all of these airline miles that I've racked up from all of my work travel that I actually get upgraded for free often. And right. now I'm actually pretty hungry, so let's talk about food. My budget for food has ballooned. Based on the BLS data, I could technically afford to spend $8,000 on food every Which month. is just stupid. You know, I think he's stretching that too. Nobody's spending eight thousand a month on food. Nobody's. Doing but I'm not that. sure that's totally common among this income bracket. There's not a ton of good data on like the one percenters. So I estimate that somebody in this bracket is spending more like three thousand five hundred dollars per month on food. No, I don't. I'm gonna tell you something right now. I've made over a million dollars a year last two two and a half years straight. You know what I'm saying? Well over that. And I'm gonna tell you something. I don't spend nowhere near three thousand dollars on food. I don't know what he's talking about. I work most of the time. I don't know if he's in this income bracket, but I work most of the time. Um, my girlfriend cooks for me, which I know is cool. I do DoorDash every now and then, every other day, maybe every three, four days, two, three times a week, something like that, uh, for like a meal or two. I go out to eat, maybe on the weekends usually. You know, Roof Chris might be two, three hundred, so I might spend a thousand dollars, two thousand. I think three thousand is a little too much. 
which is still a lot. I'm officially deep in the don't look at food prices, don't shop Definitely. for my own groceries, right. don't worry about ordering takeout whenever I want kind of rich. Right. I can pay 20 bucks for a salad, I can pay $16 for a smoothie, I could even drop $300 per person on a nice restaurant yep. and not really be too stressed about it. Now I can't too afford stress, a private it's great. I don't chef care at all. yet, but I have opted for a high-end meal service that delivers dinners to my house. I have to work a lot. The difference is that per hour, my hours are much more financially valuable. George, right. Simon, and Tim all had to spend a lot of their hours cooking and cleaning and traveling around. But I can I just do pay that. to get a lot of that time back. Right. I could technically afford to spend $4,000 a month on health. But again, we estimate that it's a little bit lower, more like $2,500. Not even that still much. Mean a totally Maybe a thousand bucks if that. World. I can go to any doctor. I can pay for a therapist out of pocket. I can easily afford to see a specialist for any right. kind of preventative care, physical therapy, elective surgeries, even stuff that isn't covered by my very good insurance. Mm -hmm. I can pay for it. I can pay out of pocket and it's not too crazy for me. Right. And even though I have a gym in my house because I converted one of the many rooms into a gym, I actually pay for another nice gym membership at this luxury spa and gym so that I can use their hot tub and sauna. I also get in on their personal trainers who are really great. I recently signed up for this fancy doctor's office where I pay a monthly fee and I never have to wait more than 10 minutes in the waiting room. Remember, my yep. time is extremely valuable. And this is one reason why my life expectancy is way up here. I'm seven probably more years. Seven yes. or eight years longer. Seven or eight years much. longer. It's crazy. Laundry, cell phone bills, Wi-Fi. We don't care about that. Costs for right. Me. I'm yep. left with at least ten thousand dollars, and month. it could be way more yeah. if I reduced some of these assumptions, Definitely. like spending thousands of dollars every month on food for just me. So what right. do I do with all this leftover money? Well, Invest I do have a semi-complicated investment portfolio that I love to talk about. My money is in the stock market. 24 7 growing compounding into more and more wealth it allows my wealth to grow much faster than those who don't have extra money to invest All right i go on vacations though they do get interrupted by work my job is very important for international trips, I do sometimes splurge on business class tickets so I can lay down on the flight. What's interesting though is that sometimes. even at this crazy income bracket, people can still blow their money every month. Definitely trying to keep easily. Up with their expanding lifestyle. Easily. But let's be clear, easily. they're living unrecognizable lives to the previous to income tiers we've talked about. Right. So let's see what happens next. All right, now let's see what happens when we turn this into twenty-five million. Twenty-five million, million a year. man. And I'm going to tell y'all something. The main thing about this video, too, I want to tell you guys is a million dollars a year, or let's even say 500000 and $25 million a year, your life is not that much different. Like, it's not drastically different. You're in the same restaurants for the most part. The people who make $25 million are not in. Once you make a million dollars a year, uh, you don't have to pay there's not some special restaurant that only you have to make $10 million to get the best food here. Like I can go spend a thousand dollars at Poppy steak right now. And that's the same restaurant. Somebody who will be making 25 million. He'll be in that same restaurant for the most part. You know, they get to fly on private jets. They get to have yachts a lot more. They get to obviously shop a lot more, but we're in the same stores. You buying a little bit more than me, a lot bit more than me. But we in Louis Vuitton, you know, we're in Pucci, we're in Fendi, we're in um, uh, all these other stores, right? Goyard, Cartier, we all, we have the same brands, AP, right? I've never made no close to that, but we have the same brands of watch. You know, you still get a nice girl, you get some nice cars, you get some nice haircuts all the time. It's not much different other than the jets, the boats, and the shopping, and that obviously the house, you know what I'm saying? But other than those still very similar you know if 25 a person who makes 25 million dollars comes in my million dollar home he's not like Psh, oh my goodness like you know what i'm saying it's it's it's, it's cool to him you, you get what i'm saying which is an amount of money that some people in this country actually make every year let's see what I their know, budget a lot of like. people my name is robert you'll never hear about me because nope. <laughs> i'm the owner of a highly successful national car wash chain or yep. maybe i'm the ceo of zillow or Chevron, yep. or maybe I'm a pretty famous celebrity, and I make $25 million a year. Noah was already in the top 1% of income earners, but now I am truly in the ranks of the global elite. Mm -hmm. And we need to pause and talk about how rich people think about 
their wealth. At this point, we have to start to rethink money because people at this money doesn't exist bracket, anymore. Think less about their yearly salary and more about the total value of all of, of what the they stuff have. they own, right. their net worth. Yep. Most of my pay is in stocks, not cash. I spend money knowing that I have all of these assets that I could sell if needed, even exactly. if it doesn't come to me in a paycheck every month. For example, this Audemar Piguet, Royal Oak, all rose gold, Chocolate on the inside was a hundred thousand dollars, and I can go sell this for with a hundred thousand. If my bank account, God forbid, I'm not gonna say mine. If somebody bank account, some rich person with this watch, bank account hit zero dollars, they can go sell this watch and get a hundred thousand dollars back to go and forward their business or recoup, get their mind right. You get what I'm saying? So he's not lying about that at all. Which is actually really great because I'm not taxed on this stuff exactly. unless I sell it for cash. Exactly. And even then, I'm taxed at like 15 to 20%. Which exactly. means that in a lot of years, my tax rate will be less than Tim, who yep. makes $100,000. I'm paying less of my income in taxes than he is. This is very good for my net worth. Yep. So let's see what I can buy. Now, given my gargantuan income, I could technically afford this Any business. house. Any house you want, pretty much, yep. It has a pool, it's got this really cool statue, and this garden that looks like it's straight out of Princess Diaries. I yep. don't want to be a princess! But, because I'm planning to buy my summer house in Italy this year, oh, okay. I'm gonna go with something a little bit more modest, like this one. A little bit more conservative, yeah. Definitely. I really like this house. The this is where I would go. The shape of someone's hand. Oh my the god, that's print nice. details. The golf room. Oh, I, I like love that. this golf I like room. That. I like and that. what can I say? That is not nice. I'm Robert. I'm an eccentric boy. This yes, house sir. has a pool, it's got a gym, it's got this This is the life right tub. here, baby. And my goal is 10 million. Once I can make 10 million a year, I feel like, okay, we up out of there. You know what I'm saying? But obviously, honestly, my first goal, I have not made more than $5 million a year. So if you guys wanna get, no, wanna get nosy, it's definitely under that number. Um, I have not made that much, but I will tell you, that's my first goal, but my ultimate goal is $10 million a year. After that, it's going to be 25. After that, it's 50. After that, it's 100. After that, I'm not going to care. I'm going straight for the billion. You know what I'm saying? Which is something I never thought I needed, but I absolutely do. What you'll start to see with this house and everything else in this income bracket is how it allows me to physically isolate myself from the concerns that most people have. I don't have to think about crime, nope. homelessness, nope. noise, nope. pollution. Nope. I can live surrounded only by people who are wealthy like me. And that's Getting probably about really a few people. I've got a couple of cars. I rotate driving them every once in a while, except for this one. This one I don't drive yeah, because it's, it's an antique and I yeah. just like to look at it. Yeah. Oh, and did I mention I have a full-time driver? I pay him $51,000 a year. He whisks me around. That's, all, that's, that's how much the driver costs? I might have to look into that. I'm spending two times what George makes in a year to pay just for this. this. Just and to it's drive totally around. worth it because it saves me time. Definitely. When I travel, he drives me right onto the runway where I jump into a private jet. Now, See, I don't this is where this life changes. Yet. But I do charter private flights. Like when I need to fly from Atlanta to New York, it costs me about $27,000 yeah. for this two hour accurate. flight. That's I can accurate. easily do that. 27 grand feels to me what $43 feels like to Simon. Not I'll even. Pay that for a nice private jet. Not even. $43 to Simon? $43 to Simon. Simon, like, that guy right there with $25 million? $27,000 is like a buying lunch, buying McDonald's for Simon. No, like, I don't fly or private buying I do fly commercial if I'm going on vacation to Paris. Mm -hmm. I'll be flying first class, obviously. Right. At a separate security checkpoint, my own lounge. And when I get on the plane, I get one of those little cabins all to myself. By the way, this ticket cost me $31,000. When I get to Paris, I usually book the penthouse in one of my favorite hotels. Yes, yeah, sir. hotel staff available at any moment. Do I cook? No, I do not cook. <laughs> I enter grocery stores only <laughs> when I feel like it would be fun to feel like a regular person. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't give a damn how much money I get. I want my woman's cooking. Sorry, all that chef shit, no. I want my woman to cook this food with some love in it. Let's start hey, up. Chef, do you wanna cut this up for her? And yet, magically, when I open my refrigerator, everything I need is in there. It's all been fully designed by my nutritionist, purchased by my house manager, prepared by my personal chef. And yes, you can see, I have a whole staff of people 
who helped me manage my life. My yep. house manager is really good at just making this all disappear. Like the landscaping gets done, the house gets manager. Cleaned, I've never heard of that stuff. one. I don't, I don't think don't... I could do that. I think I would just like honestly, I think I would just have my girl like that'd be her kind of like job. Like just just run the house, baby. You know what I'm saying? Make sure the kids Gucci. You feel me? Uh, I wouldn't at that point. I wouldn't want my. I don't. My, my girl ain't really got to clean the whole house. We this big stupid ass house. I ain't, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Why we gotta do that? You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, I think I would just have because I don't want people. I don't trust people. I'm rich. I don't want people all in my house like that. I don't know about y'all. Even know. I'm sure all of this costs a lot of money, but honestly, I've never even thought about it. I've yep. got my friends over, and our personal chef is putting together a beautiful meal. And he's even doing the wine pairing tonight, selected from my collection of quirky cult wines in my temperature controlled cellar. I don't pay attention to prices for food or wine, except when knowing the price of this bottle, for example, helps confirm how rare and special it is. I think mm -hmm. we spent $16,000 on this bottle. Mm -hmm. Or this other one that I splurged on for $150,000. Jesus Christ. I go out to restaurants, but it's a little different than the rest of the world. I have connections that allow me to get into the private back room of whatever restaurant I want. Okay, this is insane. Now that is, that's, that's different. While these costs are very feasible for someone who makes $25 million, not everyone who earns this much money lives like this. Yeah, no. In fact, a lot of, a lot of people, don't. people are incredibly frugal, making yep. their high earnings that much more impactful because they can get rich much faster. But go get a million, they go get a two, three million dollar house in Texas somewhere. It ain't really going to feel that much different. I, it's just me, wife, and the kids. I don't need a hundred. You know, I'm the guy. I'm going to get the biggest house in the world. They bet, oh, when they give me this much money, I'm telling you right now. But a lot of people don't do that. Once you get used to the money, it's just like. See, with Robert, is that you actually could spend this much money on food and housing given your income, and many do. So in addition to my nutritionist and chef, I have a personal trainer and health coach who comes to my house every day and guides me through my workout. He even travels with me to keep me exercising while I'm on the road. I have a private doctor who is on call, who comes to my house. I pay her That's what I need grand that a year too. just to be on call. She's wait, 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 that's it? Comes to my house. I pay her 20 grand a year. 20 grand a year? That's all that costs? I'm fucking signing up for that right now. Hello, how you doing? Hello. <laughs> hey, Siri, remind me to sign up for a, 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 a private doctor for 20,000 a year. Thanks. Just to be on call. She's available and she'll come do whatever I need. Like that sounds a beautiful. Like a steroid shot to my bum knee before I play a game of tennis. My that is absolutely is beautiful. My mostly preventative. I get all the scans and tests and routines done to At ensure home. that I'm in tip top shape. I can afford yes, any sir. surgery or healthcare routine or procedure that I want. And yes, last sir. year, I fully replaced all of my front teeth with veneers. Me too! It only last year, me too! $28,000. And remember, $28,000 for me is what it feels like when Tim spends $112. Right. Or what George feels like spending $28. Yep. Not nothing, but not a huge deal. It's Even nothing. after spending on $28 all of million, this, it's nothing. I still have lots of money that my financial manager funnels into sophisticated investment portfolios that just keep on growing. Investing can be really fun for me at this point. I'll just take 30 grand here and there to buy collector's items that I'm into. A couple weeks ago, I paid $5,000 for this authentic World War II helmet. This I might buy some. I'm gonna start buying stuff like that. Just to be cool, you know? Like I got to, just, just to be cool, 50 man. 50 grand. But it's a great investment because the artist is actually gonna be the next big thing, so. This stuff is fun, but it also contributes to my net worth because all of this retains and grows in value. Mm -hmm. And my clever accountant has recently mentioned that he found a way to occasionally sell this stuff and get a nice tax break on the profits. Now listen. I make a meaningful difference in my community with philanthropy. Like, I'm donating a half a million dollars to my family foundation, which is promoting education in the city. Funneling money and assets into Boy, this foundation. Boy, I cannot foundation wait. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. I can't wait. The nice tax breaks helps me avoid capital gains tax. Yep. And it gives me a buzz of feeling like I'm a generous millionaire. Yep. I even donated a few hundred thousand dollars to my nephew's private school last year. They didn't really need the money, but now they're putting my name at the top of their donor list. Which exactly. Is really great. And even after all of this, I've got tons of leftover income. I'm easily able to cover the mortgage on my secondary property in Lake Como. It's only okay. $30,000 a month. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. Chef's kiss. I mean, look at it. One of my favorite yes, parts sir. this level of 
is how much access I now have to obscure elite clubs, like this one in New York called Core. I had to pay 50 mm. grand for an initiation fee and then $17,000 annually, but it allows me to rub shoulders with really important people. I need, I, I need to start getting into that too, especially I'm in Miami and being that close to New York. Like I'm not really an outside type of guy, but being somewhere like this in this type of environment with these type of people I'm bumping shoulders with, just me and my main man, so me and my girl just chilling and we having regular conversations. I would pay that. I would pay 50 grand and 17,000 a year. That's not bad at all. I'm not gonna lie to you. And yes, there are echelons above me that mm -hmm. someday maybe I'll reach, but Definitely. I'm still existing on a fully different plane than most every single person in the world. In the world. Almost yeah. every stressor that you can think of, I can pay away. And the ones that I can't pay away, like heartbreak, grief, and social anxiety, I won't be able to pay that away at any level of wealth. Right. I am protected financially from just about any emergency that could occur in my and, life. And, and so long as I manage yep. my finances responsibly, I will never experience life below. You don't even have to to be responsible with that type of money. If you're making $25 million a year, you can blow 20 million of that in a year. Well, you know how hard it is to spend $20 million in a year? Sir, that's like $2 million a month. You have to try to do that. And you will still have $5 million a year to save and invest with. Like at this point, money doesn't even matter. Like it doesn't matter. This level of wealth. The difference between these levels of income, it's kind of hard to fathom. If you're in the $25 million camp, you make more in one hour than George makes in a year. In six months. Oh, in okay, just six months. one eight hour work day, you're making more than George makes in four years. Wow. A hundred years ago, the divide between the rich and the And I'm gonna tell you something a super rich guy told me too. This is just a and I'm a, if y'all like these type of reactions, let me know because I wanna give a lot of just game and sauce and just open up people's minds on this channel. But I'm gonna tell you something that a rich man told me um, uh, when I was living in Los Angeles, right? He told me that, yes, inflation does exist, but do you think the super rich feel it? And I was like, probably not, but tell, explain to me why. He was like, well, $25 million in 1960 was a lot of money, right? You are generational wealth with that money. And even though Break it down like this. $25 million was a lot of money in 1960. A dollar was a good amount of money in 1960. You could do a lot of stuff with a dollar compared to what you can do now. You can barely even pop, buy, you can't even buy a pack of gum for a dollar in, in 2024, right? But if you had $25 million in 1960 and you had $25 million in 2024, you don't really feel much different. You get what I'm saying? Like, okay, 1960, I got 25 million. I got the biggest house in the in the neighborhood. Uh, I got all the cars I want. It's cool. If you have 25 million dollars in 2024, you got the biggest house in the neighborhood. You got every car that you want. You you have solid gold bricks. You just got. It's the same lifestyle. Nothing really changed. So inflation really only exists in theory down here in this tax bracket once you start making 10 20 30 million 50 million 100 million dollars it's never going to be a day where we're going to wake up in the world and 25 million dollars is not a lot of money you get what i'm saying it's always going to be a lot so you gotta work you gotta go get it and that's why i make these videos right here you gotta get up you gotta go get it i watch these videos for me too because i gotta go get it i can't be satisfied with these two three four millions a year i can't be satisfied with that what i got to get that 25 man I got to get that 50. Was incredibly stark in this country. The top 1% would bring home 20% of all of the income. But mm. then look what happened. We kind of fixed it. We taxed the super rich. The working class organized and rose up, fighting for fair pay. And by the 1980s, it was more like 10% of the income went to the top 1%. Oh, but so watch it, what happens when it next. Was that Ronald? Was that Reagan? Or was that Bush? We're going back up, up. Bush. and we're leaving people like George in a trap. So understand what this means. In, 19, in 1913, this is how much of the taxes they, uh, the 1% were paying. It went down to 10% in 1980 and now it's going back up. That means rich people are paying less. Remember I said earlier in the video, middle class pays all the taxes. Rich people are paying less taxes than the middle class. And people ask, how does that work? And honestly, it works just off of tax write-offs. Just that being that. Like, 
a lot of people who make this type of money own businesses. They don't necessarily get taxed on the money that they get. You have to pay taxes. When you pay taxes, for example, as a YouTuber, if I go out to eat right now, I can go spend $10,000 at the club and I can write it, that off on taxes if I, I'm not going to do that. I, I, listen, I think the club is stupid. Let's start there. But I can write that off on taxes and maybe instead of paying the normal two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 of taxes, I now pay $800,000, $1,500 in taxes because I'm getting a partial write-off, sometimes even full write-offs. So no taxes on the money. You get what I'm saying? Going back up. And we're leaving people like George in a trap. It's not hard to see why someone like George would have lost faith in our government and our institutions right. and the concept of an American dream. Right. The system is not working for George. Right. Each cost leads to another it's cost. It's not. Creating they don't a care, man. Trap with no chance of getting out. Expensive housing far from work means a car. A car means maintenance and insurance and fuel, which means less money for food and healthcare. He makes too much for government assistance on any of this. How is George supposed to have the time, the money, or even the brain space to think about school or improving his skills? Yep. His social mobility is have limited. It. We often think about America as this land of opportunity. If you work hard, you can move up. But the data shows us that that just isn't the case anymore. For someone like George- I don't agree with that though. Because I think in America, this is, you got two arms, two legs, and a full function in mind, you can make money in 2024. I don't care who you are. Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, uh, uh, DoorDash, like you can make money. You can have a car, you can make 40000 let's just take the medium, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, you can have a car. If you want to work hard, you can go save up, you can buy another car. Now you use that car to do your DoorDash delivery. So when you get off of work, you go through DoorDash deliveries, you don't come home until you make $300 that night, even if that means you only sleep five hours, okay? So you come home with $300 plus the money that you made today. And that starts adding up. You do $300, you do that five times a week, that's $1,500 a week. There's four weeks in a month. So now you're talking about $6,000, which automatically takes your income and almost triples it. But you're getting paid at your job, right? So now you take that money with DoorDash, you obviously you take something out from gas or whatever. You take that money, you, you spend $700 on a camera, you start a YouTube channel. You spend... $200 on this microphone, you start a YouTube channel without even showing your face. You start an Instagram page without even showing your face. You start a TikTok without even showing your face. You're just reposting clips. You're just getting some type of attention. You can funnel that into a business. Now you're using the attention to sell your business. Now you look up, you're making 27 This is the time where this is the... This year is the easiest year in human history for you to make money. Especially in America. There's nothing holding you back at all. You can go out here and say, F Trump, F this, F that, F everybody, F this, aha, this. You can cl clown around and make money, man. It, it, you got to open your mind up, though. You know what I'm saying? The problem is business is getting easier to start, but our minds are getting harder to teach, bro. That's the problem. People, they aren't teaching us what we need. They used to have home ec. They used to have finance. My dad and my mom told me about classes where you would go and get actual learn about finances a little bit at least you would actually learn how to take care of yourself in the household something that's useful now we're just learning about uh two plus two is four and christopher columbus found america like we're just learning about stuff that don't matter or for the tens of millions of Americans like him. The gap is getting wider and it's getting harder to close. And that's bad, not just bad because it's unfair, but it's bad for our economy. It's bad for our politics. And it's bad for the 44 million people who live in the richest country in the world, but don't have enough food every day. Right. The people who only have access to credit via predatory lenders. The people whose lives are rocked when they get a $25 overdraft fee or who can't afford an oil change. It's time for the people People in charge in this country to do what they did a hundred years ago and reverse this curve before it becomes too late. Top 1% hold nearly 10 times more wealth than the bottom 50% combined. A staggering times. $5 wow. trillion dollars in wealth is set to be passed on without a dime of taxes. Oxfam is warning this accumulation of wealth in the hands of so few. And that's not the answer. That's another poor mindset I don't agree with either. That's not the answer, bro. The answer is not to tax the rich and now you save a little bit more on tax. What is that going to do? 
So now instead of paying, you make two thousand a month. Instead of paying four hundred dollars in taxes, you pay three hundred, two hundred. Even if it splits by fifty percent, you pay two hundred dollars less. What are you gonna do with two hundred dollars? Like that's not that's not solving the problem. It's making it a little bit better, and it, it sounds good, but that's not solving the problem. But the only thing that's going to solve the problem is for you to get up and actually want something different for your life. Because like I said, and, and I do, this is the one problem in life, in the U.S. especially. I do feel like, I do feel like people should be able to graduate high school, work at Walmart, and at least be able to take care of themselves. Maybe they don't have any money left over, but they can get a one-bedroom apartment somewhere in a kind of okay neighborhood, decent neighborhood. They can drive an okay car. And they can go to work every day and at least live. And if that's how you want to do, that's what you can do. I feel like that should be, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I also feel like people need to step up to the plate. You can't accept life for what it is. You have to go get what you have always dreamed of. And there's no person on this earth that is making $2,000 a month. That if you ask them, would you trade $2,000 a month with $2 million a month? And they would say no. There, there's almost nobody on earth that's like that. You know what I'm saying? So I hope I gave y'all some game, man. I hope y'all learned some sauce in this video. Um, I got a lot more sauce on my membership. So this is what the special um, the special thing that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. So I'm going to give you guys a, um, a, a, a promo code. The promo code is going to be content. It's for my YouTube mentorship. If you want to learn how to make millions of dollars on YouTube just like I did, step by step, I'm going through all the ins and outs with you personally. I'm talking about videos just like this, but me actually sitting down teaching you step by step all the way through to learn YouTube. Make sure you guys tap into the link in the description um, and use the word, the code content to get 50% off. It's only going to be available for the first 10 people, so make sure you guys hurry up and step on it. It's your boy Mako, and I will see you guys in my next video. Also, let me know if you guys like these type of reactions, because I'm going to be doing them on this channel a lot, just testing them out, kind of doing some experiments. So, let me know. Love y'all. Let's get rich.